to me, uh, the, the, the narrative of uh, uh, poverty amongst plenty was a reality. People time went to the forest. In fact, everybody was talking about going to cut. All of a sudden, we find that these people are now leasing the land to the invest, uh, unknown investor, and yet we are not informed. The community is not involved. The Akara Hills, Yala Swamp and Lake Kanyaboli ecosystem is under threat. Wanton charcoal burning and poaching over the decade has left the Akara Hills bare and the once glorious ecosystem is quickly fading away. The only thing left of the former pristine forest on the Akara Hills are mushrooming farms and invasive shrubs being grazed upon by hordes of cattle. The adjacent Yala Swamp is also facing the same fate with the widespread burning of papyrus as communities scramble to access the fertile land for farming. Overfishing, pollution, and obstruction by developers is threatening the unique Lake Kanyaboli, further complicating the survival of this ecosystem. These unique ecosystems in Siaya face a lot of threats. From Akara Hills where we have a lot of bush burning, we have a lot of tree felling for uh, charcoal, uh, for uh, fuel. We also have a lot of bush clearing and tree felling for creating space for uh, population uh, and uh, also household uh, establishment. Those are the politicians came in because, you know, when you tell people, there are so many people digging along the, the lake. And if you tell them that we want to pull you out of that place, uh, that is war. And then they, they use all the languages to convince these uh, community members to stop the conservation that we wanted to, to be in place. They went to court. There is a court injunction there. Otherwise, this place was already declared. It was, it's already uh, gazetted as a reserve. Mm -hmm. Lake Kanyaboli is particularly unique and a professor who was born here and who has been studying the ecosystem for years explains why the community cannot afford to lose this important resource. Yeah, my interest in the lake grew, grew actually naturally because I was born around here and this was the first water mass I got into contact with. Yeah, so we could come here and get fish as kids. So naturally we are being told about those, uh, those small fish and they uh, played a very big role in terms of uh, food security and sovereignty in my upbringing. Because if you didn't have food, you definitely be sure you'll get that fish. I really advocate for conservation of Lake Kanyaboli because it's one of the habitats that we still have viable natural populations of some cichlid species like uh, we have the Oreochromis, these are the tilapias. We have Oreochromis esculentas and Oreochromis leucostictus, as well as Oreochromis variabilis. These three are actually the, what we call the indigenous Lake Victoria tila, tilapia species. The common tilapia Oreochromis niloticus is actually an introduced species, the common one we find in Lake, in lake uh, Victoria. So this lake is a, actually a good reservoir of natural populations of those indigenous species. And besides that, we have about seven or eight species of what we call 
Fulu. Fulu are the haplochromines, those small tilapia-like fish species. They are very important because they sustain the local economy here. Lake Kanyaboli again is important, is also the papyrus is also a very good habitat of the sitatunga. Sitatunga is an antelope, it looks like the water bug. It's also found in this kind of ecosystem. Despite all the challenges facing the Akara Yala Kanyaboli ecosystem, this ecosystem has unique ecotourism potential whose proceeds can be used to uplift the lives of the majorly poor community. Aaron Green, a longtime community organizer, talks of how he came across some unique features of the ecosystem and discusses their great economic potential. Ten years ago, I participated in a research study here, and when I came over this place, uh, I got interested because I saw a lot of marvelous things that can, could really um, impress several people, me being one of the first people. So I thought that I should share with the whole world that there's, there are, there's a beautiful part of the world that people should come over and see. Lake Kanyaboli has got a very heavily silted uh, bed with very quiet and still waters, of which we are trying to look at that as, as a very good um, platform to do lots of uh, uh, aqua sports, yeah? which if this place can be designated as a, an arena or a venue for undertaking aqua sport. A lot of revenue can be collected to be able to uh, translate into development projects that would uh, benefit uh, the communities around it. At the same time, the Yala Swamp is um, home to uh, several uh, flora and fauna, like as at now, it is touted as an international bird area. It also has been designated as a Ramsar site. Dairy Rocks uh, becomes one of the proposed sites that we're looking at as the ones to be packaged as, as a site for tourism. Since uh, right from the sizes of the rocks you can see, they are very massive and also have um, uh, uh, some features like we loosely say that Dairy Rocks do a shade off, like you see from the kind of colors. Yeah, at every angle, you'll always find when you're looking at them from very far, it, it's giving you like a, a, a view of three. So it is looked at as, as a tower that um, you would always um, uh, come over and see the entire, entire area. And more so, we're also looking at this as a tourist site because um, it has um, potential for uh, religious tourism. As you can see, uh, we have people who are here for prayers. When you atop these rocks, it gives you a very good view, view of the peninsula, what makes uh, Lake Kanyaboli and Oxbow Lake. It also gives you a view of uh, the stretch of Yala Swamp into uh, Lake Victoria. Yeah, and also on the other end of it, you can be able to see uh, Lake uh, Gotra Mogi, which is touted as uh, the exodus of the Luo community when they got into, into, into Kenya. So with that, this we're looking at it as a drawstring to all these other things. Recognizing this potential and threats, individuals such as Margaret O'War have been working hard to restore the Akara ecosystem to its former glory. We started collaborating in 2010 when she joined the Southeastern Kenya University where I was then Dean of the School of Water Resources. She joined as a faculty member and we, we both were interested in the research in Lake, in Lake Kanyaboli. She has been working here since then through a roof of small grant. Yeah, so that is where our paths crossed. We are both very interested and very passionate about uh, community work and conservation of the, of the lake and the biodiversity and how that can inform sustainable development within the region. Throughout my career and throughout my education, I got to learn that more focus was being placed on Yala Swamp and Lake Kanyaboli. But people forgot about the other ecosystems that surround the, the, the main system, that is Lake Kanyaboli and Yala Swamp. So I decided that I want to come up with a project to help conserve Akara Hills. Because Akara Hills is like one of the catchment areas of uh, the, the Lake Kanyaboli ecosystem. So my main efforts are now towards how can we get Akara Hills reforested? Okay, so that we can be able you know, in uh, conservation, we have what is known as socio-ecological systems. And socio-ecological system basically means we, look, we need to look at the social, the economic, and the ecological aspects. 
So maybe people are focused more on the ecological system and forgot about the people who are using these resources. So these people never understood that, for example, in Le Kanyaboli, if I use a wrong size net and I catch fish that are even uh, are smaller, or I catch fish from their breeding site, we, we, buy, we end up having the fish getting extinct. So I'm trying to use the community approach to help conserve these systems. Right behind me, uh, we are undertaking a project on uh, community empowerment uh, through education and awareness creation on uh, tree planting. We will be talking about environment. What is environment conservation? But we are forgetting about this. What's this? Timber. Where does timber come from? Trees. Cindy, without that, we will not be having this. Uh, the project is uh, funded by Rufford's uh, Foundation. Uh, so it's called known as small grants. So they give this for people to uh, initiate uh, small projects, mostly on conservation, community empowerment. So today we are visiting Adua Primary School in uh, Sierra County. So right now they are preparing their nursery so that they uh, plant uh, they, they plant their seeds, which we are going to donate to them. So we give them seeds and uh, water cans, and we bring in an expert from the forestry department from the county to train them and show them how the nurseries are prepared. When she came, she embraced the idea that we have as many trees as possible in the compound. Margaret is also working with the county government and the Seeds of Peace organization to use sports as a means of implanting conservation messages to the next generation. We found out that sports is a very good tool, especially for conservation. Because when you look at the young kids, the young kids, when, we, when they come together, we, uh, we teach them, we discuss with them on how to conserve the environment. Uh, you know, this, this one instills in them. And uh, it, this, the child will actually go back home. And uh, uh, the message when passed from the child to a parent at home, to a neighbor at home, to uh, uh, an elderly at home, it gets uh, uh, well with the community. Because if you look around, you'll see everywhere is burnt. Everywhere is burnt. But it's not burnt by the children. We are also making to treat and teach the community the importance of planting trees and this is like a civic education for the community members because they used not to understand the importance of trees. But we have started with the youths, with the women and with the men so that all of us can go together and make sure that we conserve the environment and then in the near coming future our grandchildren and grandchildren will get a better place to live. Simon of Kayed has also been working with Margaret to introduce alternative sources of energy to the community to reduce deforestation facing the Akara Hills. Kayed, which is a community-based organization here, is helping Margaret to achieve uh, her objectives in her project. We, we've been helping her with the mobilization, uh, we are supporting her mobilization, with the, we are linking her with the groups that we are working with, we are, that we are already working with. The main problem in Akara Hills is deforestation. When we use these technologies, we will not go for firewood from there, or we will go for less, because now the, the technologies will use less fuel.
Going forward and with environmental champions like Margaret, Akara has a bright future and its community and ecosystem will thrive based on various recommendations. I'm happy that uh, the, 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 uh, the approach that the Kenya, Nature Kenya came with uh, might solve the problem that we are now facing. Uh, there was that uh, we balance both the conservation and development. And that's why we are now coming up with that document, that we balance both. It, is, it would be very unwise for us to tell people to vacate land where they have been uh, getting food, because this place is very dry. This, this season, most of us did not get something to eat. But most, those who are digging along the, the, the swamp uh, managed to get something. So we cannot just tell them all of a sudden that please move out of the place. What we want is to sit down together as, a, as members of the community. We agree that if we want to utilize this swamp, how are we going to utilize it? There should be a place for community to do their activities. And the investors who are also coming, like the one that we is coming in, we are not opposed to that. What we want is there should, should be a place where they are supposed to, they should be given a place. And uh, even the KWS, the, people like us who are interested in conservation. There should be an area located for us. We want it to be balanced. The experience that I've had working with these communities and the potential that this has, I would recommend that one, we have lots of um, education uh, within this community. Also, uh, I would recommend that uh, we have uh, a review and uh, imp an effective implementation of policy at the county level, even a government, le a national government level, so that it can be able to guide uh, uh, practices, human activities and practices around this place uh, that uh, are detrimental and are also um, uh, threats to this community. Or put in place a regional development block, as in the, like uh, the zoning plan, so that we identify specific areas for specific uh, that have got specific potential, then we build up on that. Like, for example, when we have uh, the tourism, like the ecotourism uh, ends, then we embark on that. When we have areas for public uh, uh, recreation, let us have that. If we have uh, a conservation area, let us have that. And if we have a hospitality end, let us also have that. Then at the same time, a tourism development, a product development, and also marketing strategy be put in place to be able to market Lake Kanyaboli and the entire ecosystem. I feel there's lots of, um, there's a great potential here, but a revenue collection system has not been put in place. So I would say that if a revenue collection system would be put in place so that whoever is, is visiting this would also uh, uh, give some money back and this would be collected and shared to uh, the relevant uh, uh, community through a public-private partnership a platform that would identify projects on, uh, on needs basis. Lastly, I would say that um, there needs to be a lot of uh, awareness and uh, sensitization amongst the locals, okay, who are outside this uh, environment, who work, who live outside this, that it is time for them to be able to visit this place. I would like uh, to invite the politicians the people who are holding, uh, who have the power to come up with management plans, proper land use management plan. After that, they need to come up with a community because without empowering the community, they will always destroy the resources because if you don't tell them how important it is and how well they can use it, then you bring other private developers who they see using it, then they, there's that conflict. Down here, there's a lot of conflict because there's a very big private developer who has come in through the government, the county government, and the community have been pushed away from what they are calling the ancestral land. So that's bringing conflict. So the main thing is that the policy makers and the decision makers <coughs> need to understand the whole ecosystem, how it is linked, so that they can know how well it can be managed. Apart from recommendations, Margaret has dreams about the bright future of Akara. I dream of very big forest with nature trails, you know, camping points, um, a very beautiful environment where children can go and relax, it can be a learning resource for the society, and also it can be an eco tourism place where the community can earn some income because in all this the community comes first. 
Go, what do I want? I don't go for the world, but you put on me. 